problems with defeating X-Men or piloting a solid X-Men deck yourself? I know that feeling, so let's look into the deck in detail. Hey everyone, Green Cricket here, doing weekly Quent guides requested by you down in the YouTube comments below, so we can master the game and reach the goals we set ourselves. The content of this video will be the decklist with explanations of the synergies, a mulligan guide, our general plan for playing this deck, an analysis of every matchup and how we need to adapt to that, and an example match. Let's start with the decklist and why we use exactly those cards and not Darren, for example. For those who are new to the game, X-Men will buff themselves by 1 for every damage enemies on the opposite row receive, meaning they will, they will receive 1 point every round for a better tick, 3 points every round if your Skelliger Storm hits 3 units on the enemy row, and 4 points for each warship that is played. They are great as finishers in combination with our leader, which will split 9 damage to enemies on the opposite row, therefore triggering your X-Men 9 times. So if you have two X-Men on the board and drop Harald, you can do a 33 point swing. However, X-Men are easily countered by cards like Scorch, Mandrake, and so on. So one of the most important lessons of this guide is that you should not rely on your X-Men too much. A lot of games you will win without your X-Men even developing value, and that is thanks to our ships. Warship is a solid 11 point play with the ability of removal which is handy to kill off enemy elves or triggering our eyes. If you have X-Men on the right row, you will also trigger them for 4 points each. Vela is especially useful when you have Gold Vader on the board because they are able to move an enemy to a row you like, for example an empty row with Vader on it or into a row where your X-Men are already waiting to get buffed. Pirate Captains enable us to pull warships or corsairs from the deck and Spare Maiden can be used to pull any other bronze except corsairs. Corsairs are the most versatile card in the deck because as soon as you have a Whaler or a Warship in your graveyard, you have the free choice which one you want to rest, which lets you adapt to the current board situation. Restore is best used onto a Pirate Captain in run 3 for a big power play, but a Spare Maiden also makes a good target. Typically, I don't use it on X-Men, except I'm really sure that there are no counters in the enemy deck and my X-Men is able to grow. Seek the Rifa lets you resurrect everything except Corsairs and Skelliger Storm deals free damage to 3 units in a row, which is a lot of damage on its own, but really skyrockets if you're able to place an X-Men onto the row as well. Now let's talk about what makes this deck different than the standard X-Men deck, which play Darren. The problem with Darren is that he's even more easily counterable than X-Men thanks to his low health. A Skelliger Storm is enough to get X-Men out of Elsa's Thunder range, but Darren will still die to it. Instead, we use Iris to have a big run free finisher, but the only condition is that she needs to die. And we have a lot of tools to do so, with Whalers and Warship. Especially in combination with, with a restored Pirate Captain, you can immediately set up the board for her, granting you more value than Darren most of the time. Ulrich we need to counter spy and to look for the cards we need, while Skjall is able to pull Iris or Ulrich depending on what's left in the deck. Through Heim, we have perfect control over this by allowing us to either play Udalric or Iris directly or by playing Skjall into the one card which is still left in your deck. Goldweather is able to provide an insane amount of value, especially if you can use Whalers to place the enemy units onto different rows. Werner Bran is another Skelliger Storm with a 6 point body. Just plain good. N nothing more to say about it. When you start a game, you need to be mindful of your mulligan. Cards you want to keep are Pirate Captains, Whalers, X-Men, Spare Maiden, as many weather as possible, and Heim. Cards you want to get rid of are Corsairs, because you don't have anything to resurrect, Warships, so you can pull them with Captains and ensure your Captains don't break, Udalric, if you have Iris on hand and you're able to pull it with Skjall or Heim. Depending on your enemy, you need to adjust your mulligan, but we talk more about this in the matchup section. Let's move to the general game plan. X-Men like red coins, so if you're on blue, we typically dry pass except the matchup doesn't allow it, but more about this as well in the matchup section. Other than that, we always open up with gold weather. I was hesitant about this for a long time because I thought I need to bait the enemy's weather clear first, but it's pretty hard and loses you a lot of value. Better to just play it straight into their face and get the clear out. If you have more weather, you just follow up with that after the clear, if not, then you need to rely on your ships to win this. Nothing is lost, because Weather Clear is always a very low tempo play. 
If the weather sticks, we will use Veilers to position the enemies to get the maximum value out of weather. As soon as we have 3 targets in a row, which won't die immediately, we follow up with Skelliger Storm to further maximize the weather damage. This is the row where our X-Men have the best chance to stick, so typically we follow up by placing them on the board. Then we follow up with more ships, ideally with warships to gain points and to set up our graveyard for run 3. Try to stay ahead and get card advantage so we can pull off a powerful finisher. A short run 3 is where a lot of X-Men decks struggle, but this deck has a chance to shine. By setting up our board with Sigdrifa into X-Men, Restore into Pirate Captain, into Corsair, into a ship, we can pull a lot of units onto the board in only a few turns, getting the full value of Iris, which we will then destroy with the resurrected warship. This is often enough, but don't forget that Harald is also a 15 point play, so keeping for run free is always a good idea. The best situation is when we have the last play and we know we can make an X-Men stick to the board because for example Hansel's last card is Bloody Baron. In that case, we resurrect or drop the X-Men and play Harald as the last card for extra 9 points on the X-Men. Some general tips. If enemy spies you in round 2 and you use Heim to pull your spy, then he can dry pass on you because of the extra 3 points on Heim. You can also use Heim into Skial into Udalric to only lose 5 points for getting card advantage, which can push an enemy out of the round, especially if they're under gold weather or you have your X-Men ticking. That way you will actually gain points by playing a spy. Be careful with your Skjall in the round 3 mulligan or he may end up as a dead card. Don't forget that Skjall can either pull Uderic or Iris, so mulligan one of those if you're in danger of drawing into Skjall. Those were just some general tips, but adapting to each matchup is key for this deck. So let's go through each of them in detail. Alchemy. Mulligan away your X-Men. All of them. Because they won't survive the Vipovichs. Your machines and weather will win this for you, especially if your enemy can't high roll into weather clear from runestone or black blood. And even if, then you just throw more weather at them. Since they need to play Markham Ale, they won't roll stack, making it easier for your weather to hit. Be careful with Iris though, because they can buff her up with Swallow or use Wilgiforce to trigger it before you want her to be triggered. Reveal. Like Alchemy, don't focus on the X-Men too much since they can get rid of it with Scorpions and Mangonels. Typically Reveal also plays Scorch and Yennefer Enchantress or Will Treadmorph for double Scorch. This is why I would try to play X-Men after they are most likely to stick, like when you already established the Skelliger Storm, so the enemy needs to make use of the Scorching effects in round 1. Keep Iris for round 3 and do a decent value push there because without the Scorches, they won't be able to create that much power anymore. Great Swords. The bad news? Your weather may be soaked by their greatswords. The good news? Their ships will trigger your X-Men. So this matchup is really a love-hate relationship for me. Mulligan your gold weather because the greatswords will soak most of the damage and you don't want to trigger his engines for him. Skelliger Storm on the other hand is good to have because as soon as he lined up units, Skelliger Storm will be able to deal 3 damage per turn as long as the first unit it hits is the enemy longship. Play your X-Men early even before the weather, then apply Skelliger Storm and use your Veilers to pull units into the storm while breaking up the longship greatsword combo. It may look like you can catch up with your enemy, but don't forget that they have Coral and Mandrake while you have no removal at hand. Therefore getting that out of your enemy's hand in round 1 is very helpful. Don't rely on X-Men as your finisher, because you may not get good targets to hit with Harald, like greatswords that reset. Instead, try to go for the restore into Captains, etc. into Iris combo. If Kroll has not been played, you can also bait Kroll with your Iris, so you can deploy X-Men afterwards. Boats. Boats is, li is like greatswords, but this time, your weather actually will provide you value. Bra Bran is most likely to start off with carryover, so I would dry pass to avoid going down a card. Since Bran doesn't run weather clear, you can be sure that your weather will stick, so get X-Men out and get that card advantage. Also Bran really does not like short runs, so it's all about winning the long one. However, don't forget that one X-Men will be crawled, so don't risk anything and better get all your available X-Men out. Veterans. Like boats, they do not run weather clear, so it will generate quite some value for you. The difference to boats is that they are actually really good in a short round and they don't really care about round 1 length. 
They even embrace a medium round, which is just enough to set up their graveyard. Since they are not playing Spy, fully commit to round 1, use your Spy to turn the color of the coin in your favor and win it so they don't bleed you with a semi-long round 2 and a short round 3. Hanslet. Default may clear you better, but you can do so only once, so get it out ASAP, because another benefit is, the more better you play in the beginning, the few units will become targets for his machines. Hansel typically row stacks, so wait until you see which row he commits to, get the Skelliger Storm out, deploy your X-Men and use warships so they survive. Be aware that Hansel runs Scorch, so create a decent point gap between your X-Men or your enemy will use their machines to line them up for double Scorch, which will cost you the game. If Scorch is out, you can play Iris as your first card in round 3, further denying machine targets before you set up your board with Restore and Co. Coin flip offs. Your Vedder may stick or not, which depends on if they're able to use Brewer to get Ida and how lucky they are with getting Vedder clear from Elf Scout or Doppler. Use your ships to kill off the Elves or, they will pu or pull them into the Vedder and pass before they are able to play their Vanguards for insane value. It may be tempting to just overroll them with Badass X-Men and Vedder that's stuck, but keep in mind that Shiru is in the deck, so consider that before you commit to the round. Shoop. It's the same as coin flip elves, but with less ability to clear your Vedder and less power in a long round. Commit to a long round and hope that Shoop won't get the option they are looking for. Don't forget they run Shiru as well, and possibly Elven Arch and Wardancer, so stagger your Axma in a way that you prevent the double scorch. Moonlight. Moonlight is the only deck where I would hold back my Vedder to override his as soon as he plays it. Even if he does not play Moonlight, because he's afraid of your Vedder, you already are denying them a lot of points. Play your X-Men and use Warships to buff them, while avoid row stacking too hard, because he may switch to Offensive Vedder and Blood Moon will punish you for a full row. Deathwish. The Cyclops are able to destroy a friendly unit and deal their power in damage, so try to play your X-Men before they can utilize an 11 power unit or your Spy for, 11, for 13 point damage. Early X-Men also make sense, because Deathwish have some high tempo plays like Griffin into Dao, and it may be hard to compete with that if you have no X-Men on the board. Skelliger Storm on Vos with Dao is great because it won't run out of targets this way. Okay, enough of the matchup, let's head into an example match. I respect nothing. Human. Let's call it our two X-Men because that's what it is. Here's the better loot than in your so there we go. Uh, we play dreams. against if nay. Okay, this could this could be anything. This could be like the, um, the scorch control, like the quadruple scorch thing. I've seen movement with Ifne. I've seen shoot with Ifne. If Ifne, like probably X-Men won't stick as well because um, they have a lot of removal. If you don't get better, like especially Skelliger Storm, like they won't stick. So we have all the cursed units as well. So let's maybe get rid of ship. There we go, Skelliger Storm. Perfect. Let's get rid of Ulderic. Let's get rid of Corsair. Good. It's not a bad hand. Like it could be better if we get better, but I think we should be fine. You annoy me. So there we go. I think we should just start off with Skelliger Storm. Like why do we care? And if he has better clear than um, well, we also have a Punis to pull stuff into the Vedder. Um, one thing I learned from the Morkis War is like, if you have Vedder on your hand, like, you just don't care. You just play it, like, you don't tag around with, who ha does he has um, Vedder clear or not? Like, you just, just play it on the board, you see. Playing Vedder later is just like, so many points lost, so like, just get the clear out immediately and... and then we see, I guess. And it is. He also the thing is he also can high roll into Man, scout into weather clear, which doesn't look like it currently. But yeah. in this case, we can actually play the X Men now because it will get out of um, removal range. The only thing which could kill him probably is Cleaver, but we'll see. So now it's 11 points, and no else Thunder can actually hit it. So it's actually fine to play it now. And then we use Harpoonus to actually move stuff to the X Men. We don't have a second X Men, but. No. We have machines which give us value, so well, let's see if he plays out of a compression. If he does, then hmm. We'll see. Otherwise, we still have Secret Defer to raise it again. We can. He probably looks for another scout to. Everything alright. Um, okay. Oh, he actually plays. With, well, that's interesting. So we can play Worship here, but um, with Worship, 
he would get up to like to six plus two, so it's eight. So it's still in Alza's thunder range, so we don't care too much. So we just pull in the dwarf, and we just hope that like he will survive. We can just play Ifni again and get another um, X-Men out. Uh, get another thunder out. We'll see. Oh, actually, okay, that's 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 also fine for me. So we just play like a ship, giving us another um, Corsair target, and then we're going to play like a longer run free. Oh, that's it. At least that's the idea. There you go. The question is just, does he have War Dancer? We'll see. <laughs> if he has War Dancer, then I mean, we play Spy anyway, um, since we have Iris on hand. Oh, let's see. Okay, there's a course that's not bad. Battle means doesn't bad. Gives us another X-Men, for example, if you rest it. Um, in this case, let's actually get rid of the Corsair. There we go. Paracaptains are better. There is no X-Men on his side. Question is, do we want to play a Spy next round or do we want to play Spy this round? The advantage of playing Spy this round is, is that we have it out of the deck and like it's more likely that we get better. Like, the disadvantage is if you like if the advantage of next round is if we actually have better, we can use the spy to fill a row. But since we have two harpooners available, probably fle free, I would rather play the spy in this round. I fear nothing. There we go. There is the heat wave. Perfect. So now we have something for last round, and if he doesn't clear, it, then this would be really awesome. Especially crowd the heat wave or like former known as drought, we'll be able to kill his low powered elves. Which is really good against them because then they can swarm. So there's the Panther. And there we go. Like on equal cards, and we just pass into last round. And we have last card, which is fine. Because like the longer the round, the better for us, right? That's the idea. And let's see. Um Burner would also be good. Like if I get Burner, I would not say no. Um, Corsair is kind of me because we already have Parrot Captains, so let's get rid of it. There's an Axeman. Let's see. Let's see if we actually rest the Axeman or the Veil. It depends if Veil sticks and if the Axeman actually are able to stick. Well, he plays the Spy, missing no name, as your name. Not the one okay. to start. Well, we don't need an offensive target, we just start off with better. And let's see if Veil sticks to the board or not. If it doesn't stick, then we need to just win it without better, which is entirely possible since we have Iris. And access to warships. Let's see. Okay, actually clears, which is <laughs> well, a shame. Uh, but we have harpooners to actually pull stuff into the row, so it's fine for me. For example, let's pull this right there, so it immediately gets hit by the rod, and let's take it from there. You annoy me. Um, and I think we need to go full um, whaler here to move it, as many um, stuff into the rows as possible. So there we go. If you move the, the doomed copy, of course, so he can't res it, like if he does like some Hattori Shinigans. And now uh, we at least have some better ticking. We can also use Sig Trifa to res a Whaler, but I mean, currently we still have one um, Corsair, so that's fine. Um, where do we actually play stuff in? I think well, like, we could also play... Um, I mean, we could play an X-Men now. We could also play an X-Men here. After we played one more pirate captain, so like another panther can kill it. He has two reconnaissance, so he's probably playing some Noah thing. Um, do we think he's a second panther? Maybe. So the question is like we could also wait with X Men just played here then, so we have like a Harald finisher combo or something. So what I'm guessing is, I think I just go for Power Cap here, go for a Corsair, and then we get um, something into, the, into here, because this will die sooner. I'm pulling the right off, so there we go. And now we're 70 points ahead for now. We need to keep the Power Captain for the warship, so we can't trigger Iris. That's the important part. And let's see. We also need to ensure that we don't stack up Scorch because he probably runs Shiru, so if he hits something like 13 13, it could be. Yeah. Okay. Is he playing more. Is he playing some movement stuff? Like, does he want to get me into the pit trap? That's interesting. Do we think we get X-Men off? Because I really don't think that we'll do. 
And this would give me another pirate captain into another warship, and this would just pull me a warship. So what I'm thinking is if we just pull out... I don't want to play X-Men in here. <laughs> but I think we may pull an X-Men in here at some point. Because let's, this will be probably our Harald row. For now, let's just play it here, I guess. Maybe it sticks. Maybe it doesn't. We'll see. We could play Ifne and just like play Thunder, but it's better to let you use Ifne and Thunder on the X Men than um, like playing, for example, like another Pit Trap or another Runestone. So it's actually good that to, that we play this here, and we can still play it. No so there's the Thunder, I guess. Oh, it's actually Runestone. Look at this. Follow me this way. Oh, that's not bad. Um, let's see how we do this. Like this is for the RS, we can play, we could replay an X-Men here, but it's like probably uh, even after the RS. So I'm thinking of just playing the RS in here now, let it tick, and if he does some shenanigans, like that happens, otherwise it will tick automatically, so. I'm we so have enough very, units for RS to, you know, afraid. get off. Let's see. Let's see if he does something with it, otherwise we need to focus, use our um, warship to actually trigger it. But since it's drawed, like, if he doesn't play another one point unit, it's pretty sure that it will get off. If he has decoy and stuff, he could bounce it back to us and put it into the pit trap, for example. I guess we'll see. Okay, he gets rid of my X-Men, we don't care too much. Um, this will get off. What I'm thinking now is like if he actually plays for now into um, into the... So that's Ziktrifa, but the X-Men in here. So this will be an Herald target. Let's see. The goddess protects you from all evil. I mean, we don't really have other rest targets anyway. So there we go. Maybe Iris actually hits it, and then there we go. And that, that now it's actually out of uh, out of thunder range. So that's also a way how you can make X Men stick. It's also out of panther range, uh, thanks to Iris. So there we go. We have now one ship to rest and one ship. This is basically two ships, and then we have um, Harald. Okay, that's the Mandrake. That's, don't care too much here. Um, let's get the warship out, and then we're going for another ship, and then let's just see where we, where we hit Harald. There's the Corsair. There's the warship. Which is well, something is igniable anyway. Let's make this row igniable because it's only Sigtrifa. And let's hit. Let's kill an elf because we don't want to have him. I don't think he will swarm, but like, the less elves, the better, normally. So thanks to Iris, we're currently pretty far ahead. Um, he can still Scorch. Oh, there's a dead resume. That's good for us. So what we do is we get another Paracat out. There we go. We could even think of... We could have thought of getting X-Men out, but like this is risky because X-Men could still be removed. So in our case... I actually got this rule we can able anyway. Um, this is just solid value. There we go. Wait, 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 don't leave yet. Leave a comment below to discuss which deck we should take a look at next and I still have more Quent content for you. Subscribe and see you in the next video.